you ever run into problems you don't know how to fix when you're working on your project in DaVinci Resolve? I sure have, but today I've got six fixes for you on how to fix problems that are pretty common that you might run across while you're working in DaVinci Resolve. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, but let's get into these six fixes for your problems in DaVinci Resolve. So let's say you're trying to render out your project in DaVinci Resolve and it keeps crashing on you and you don't know why. Now there could be a whole bunch of different reasons, but if we check these two options in our preferences, that'll at least prevent some of the things that may not matter so much from stopping your render from completing. Check this out. In DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna go to the DaVinci Resolve menu and bring up our preferences. Now in our preferences, we wanna go to user at the top and then in our UI settings down here, we have these two options. Stop playback when a dropped frame is detected and stop renders when a frame or clip cannot be processed. Now by default, when I started in Resolve, these were checked on. I'm not sure if they are, if you've never touched these settings. They may be on, they may not be, I'm not sure, but check it and make sure that they're turned off. You do not want the check marks here because that's gonna tell Resolve, hey, if there's a little problem with either a dropped frame or a frame can't be processed, stop the whole render. Now I found that once I turn this on, it would render out pro videos with no problems. And any of those drop frames never really made a difference in anything that I ever noticed when I was rendering out my videos. So I leave these turned off, and if you're having problems rendering out your video, it keeps crashing and you don't know why, turn these two options off, and hopefully then it'll go ahead and render your video all the way out. The next fix that we have here is when your playback gets a little slow. Now maybe you started your project, everything was working out fine and smooth, and then maybe you added in some higher resolution footage, or maybe your project just started slowing down and you didn't know why. Here's a few things you can check to help restore the workflow of your project and make it run a little bit smoother. So if you've got a lot of footage in your project, you may wanna come up to the playback menu, timeline proxy resolution and change it from full down to either half or quarter. That's gonna just make playback a little bit easier on your machine and make Resolve be able to play back your footage easier too. Then you can also check your render cache. Now, this may be set to none. I like to leave it on smart and that allows Resolve to kind of render things in the background while you're not doing anything. And that just kind of helps with the overall smoothness of your playback. Now, where you might run into some issues is when your render cache is set to something like smart or user and you've got a lot of render cache. You've got so much that it's actually bogging down your machine because those render cache files can get really huge really quick. So I recommend every once in a while you go in and delete all those render cache files and it's not gonna mess up your project. And if DaVinci Resolve needs those cache files again, it'll just recreate them. So here's how you can delete those files. Again, in your playback menu, if you come down to delete render cache, you can do all right here, or you can come to here, manage cache data. And what that's gonna do is bring up a list of all of your projects and which ones have cache associated with them and which ones don't. For example, here's one that has uh, 996 megs of cache. I could delete that. You can select all of these. You can select one of these. You can pick the projects that you wanna delete the cache from. And that's a great way to do it right here because you can see what you're deleting. Now real quick, the way I like to do it is just to go into my folder in Finder or Explorer and just delete all of the cache files. So for me, I go to my directory where I store all my cache files, which is on an external hard drive. I've got my cache clip folder here and in here I've got all these different cache files that I don't know what they are, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete them all because it's gonna clean everything up and if Resolve needs them, it'll recreate them. And for me, it doesn't really affect my workflow all that much for Resolve to have to recreate any of the cache files that it might need. So I'll just come in the cache clip folder, select them all, right click, move to trash. That's it, my cache files are cleaned up. You might get a lot of space back on your computer or your hard drive too. But those cache files could be bogging down DaVinci Resolve on you. And on a side note, I would put those cache files on an SSD external drive so you don't clog up your internal drive on your computer there because they add up quick if you're doing a lot of projects in DaVinci Resolve. This next one is one I get all the time and that's I don't have any audio in DaVinci Resolve. Now there's a lot of reasons why you might not have audio, but here is the biggest one and the most popular uh, fix for not having audio in DaVinci Resolve. So in Resolve, you wanna come up to the DaVinci Resolve at the top left, come down to Preferences. In Preferences, we wanna go to System, you wanna to go to video and audio, I slash O, go to the audio in and out, and down here we have output device. You wanna make sure that that output device is set to your output device. Sometimes Resolve will grab a different output device from your computer and it's not your speakers or your headphones. So you wanna double check that. That's one of the most common problems is that Resolve just isn't pointing to the correct output 
for your audio. Now, if for some reason you select your output device here, but you still don't hear it, just close Resolve and open it back up, but make sure your output device is connected to your computer, whether it's headphones, your speakers, whatever it might be. For whatever reason, sometimes Resolve just doesn't pick up your default speaker setup or headphones or whatever it might be, and that's why you're not getting any audio out of DaVinci Resolve. I've got another four fixes for you here coming up, but before we get there, I want to tell you a little bit about some of the classes I've been taking on Skillshare. You might know our friend Marcel, the modern filmmaker. He's got a DaVinci Resolve class on there that's really good. I've been going through it and watching it. He does a great job of explaining a lot of the basics and things you need to know about DaVinci Resolve when you're getting started. So if you're looking to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, I'd recommend go over to Skillshare and check out Marcel's class. Some of the other classes I've been checking out lately are ones that have to do with audio mixing, how to mix drums. I also like looking at how to grow your YouTube channel, how to make better videos, but there is a ton of different kinds of topics and subjects that you can learn there. Maybe you want to get out of that boring nine to five job and you want to get into something else, but you need to take some classes to learn a little bit more about it before you make that jump to leave your full-time nine to five and go with something that you enjoy a little bit more. Skillshare's got those kind of classes that you can jump on there, learn everything that you need to know to be able to make changes in your job or start side hustles. All of the classes that I've watched on there have been super helpful and gave me a lot of great information. And if you're one of the first 500 people to sign up using my link in the description below, you'll get a month for free. You can jump on there, check out any class that you want while you have that free month's trial. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into the rest of our fixes for problems you might have here in DaVinci Resolve. So a lot of people like to record directly into DaVinci Resolve, and I myself do that pretty often, but a lot of people run into issues where Resolve won't record, and they don't know why it won't work. Now there's four steps in that process, and I'm gonna talk about them real quick here, and then I'm also gonna show you what happens when you can't find where your voiceover was recorded. You're like, where'd it go? I can't find the file. I don't know where it is. I'm gonna show you where it is. So the four steps you need to do in order to record into DaVinci Resolve are this. Number one, make sure your microphone is set as your input device. You're gonna to go to DaVinci Resolve, down to Preferences. Again, you're gonna to go to System Audio Video I slash O, and under the Input section for audio, you're gonna make sure you have your microphone selected. Now, sometimes by default, Resolve doesn't select your microphone, so this is step number one. Make sure your microphone is set as the input. Step two in the process is to come to Fairlight at the top, come down to Patch Input Output. That's gonna bring up your patching, and what you wanna do is on the left side, select Audio Inputs. You're gonna select your microphone. In my case, I know it's Channel 1 on my audio interface. Select your destination, which is gonna be your track input. And now you can select your track and then hit patch and that's gonna patch your microphone into your track. Step number three to record into DaVinci Resolve is to arm your track to record. Whenever you have a track in DaVinci Resolve and you have a microphone patched into it, this little R right here is gonna be selectable. You can click on it and you can see mine doesn't light up because my microphone's not patched at the moment because I'm using it. But if your microphone is properly patched in to this channel, I can hit the R, it's gonna light up red, and then I can record into DaVinci Resolve. Now, it doesn't start recording yet because that's only the third step in the process. We need to do step number four in order to actually start the recording in DaVinci Resolve. So step number four in Fairlight here is to hit the record button, which is in our toolbar just above the timeline. So you need to hit that record button, then DaVinci Resolve will start recording. Typically, if your recording is not working, you're missing one of those steps or you need to double check them. So those are the four steps you need in order to record voiceovers or a microphone directly into DaVinci Resolve. So you record it into DaVinci Resolve and now you're like, I can't find my file. Where did it go? I have no idea where it went. So here's the fix to find out where did DaVinci Resolve put your voiceover file. Now this is gonna vary on a project by project basis, depending if you told Resolve where to put this file. We wanna come down to the gear icon at the bottom right, our project settings. Go ahead and open that up. Then we wanna to come to capture and playback. And under the capture section, we have right here, save clips to. By default, this is the location where all of your cache files are. So if you can't find your recording, it's probably wherever your cache files are and whatever appears in this box right here, you can look and copy that and go find it in your either Finder or your Windows Explorer. Now, what I like to do is I like to save my recordings with the project. So I'm gonna to come to browse here and then I would just go browse to the directory for my project and it will automatically save those recordings into my project directory. And this is gonna be on a project by project basis. The default for this field here where the clips get saved is the cache file location. So you need to change it on a project by project basis. And as a bonus fix here, if you don't know what your file is even named, you have no idea, 
Here's a quick tip for you. Your recorded file in DaVinci Resolve when recording right into Resolve will have the same name as your track. So in this case, if I record it on this track right here, it's gonna be titled Jay's Recording and it may have some numbers or a date or something after it, but it's gonna say Jay's Recording so I know where to find it or how to search for it in case I don't know where it is and I can't find it based on checking out the previous fix in our project settings. The next fix I have for you is when you try and slow down a clip in your timeline and it just doesn't look smooth, it looks jittery, it doesn't look good. There's some settings we can change to make that playback a little bit better right here in Resolve, check it out. So here in my timeline, I've got a video of a guy doing a flip on a dirt bike and I want it to be in slow motion. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make my clip slow motion. So I'm gonna select my clip, Command or Control R, open my read time controls. I'm gonna select 50% change the speed 50%. Now, if I play through the clip now, you're gonna notice it looks a little bit jittery, right? Because there's not enough frames there to make that smooth. Well, we can use some settings here in our inspector. So make sure your inspector's open, come down to your read time and scaling settings. For read time process, we wanna change this to optical flow. Then for motion estimation, you wanna change those as well. Now, if your machine doesn't have a ton of power, uh, maybe you don't have a great graphics card, you maybe wanna use something like enhance faster or enhance better. But if you want the best results and have it look the best that Resolve can do, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and pick Speed Warp. But do know that Speed Warp is gonna slow down your machine a little bit until it renders up if you have your rendered cache turned on, which you should. So it's gonna bog down the machine a little bit because Speed Warp is a pretty intense process for your machine to handle. But I'm gonna choose Speed Warp here so you can see what the results look like. So the clip has been cached, we got the blue line, and here's what it looks like if we play through it. Pretty amazing that Resolve can create those frames and blend it together like they were always there to begin with. So if your slow-mo clips don't look good, try those two settings and it should help them look a lot better. And the last fix that I have for you that's a common problem that I hear is when you create a vertical video for something like YouTube Shorts or TikTok or Instagram and it's a vertical format, you create it in DaVinci Resolve, maybe your timeline is a vertical format, and then you go to export it, you upload it, and on YouTube, for example, it doesn't see it as a short. Why doesn't it see it as a short? I don't understand what's going on. I made a vertical video, it should be a short. Here's two things you can check to make sure your vertical video is actually vertical so you can get it onto the platform of your choice. So in the deliver tab here in DaVinci Resolve, let's say you set your project to be rendered. Maybe you pick uh, the YouTube preset or one of these other presets. For me, I have my own presets. I have a 1080 to 4K preset here and I have everything set up and I'm ready to go render out my video. It's a vertical video, but in order to render that vertical video, you need to check this right here, use vertical resolution. If you don't have that vertical resolution button checked, you're gonna get a horizontal aspect ratio with your vertical video in the middle of it. Then you go to upload it somewhere like YouTube and you get a regular size video and it doesn't allow you to use it as a short. So that's a common thing. People forget to check that box when you're rendering out the vertical video. So make sure that that box is checked. The other problem that I've seen with YouTube Shorts is if it needs to be less than a minute, but you're really close to it, say you're at 59 point something seconds, and it's not quite a minute in Resolve when you look at it, but when you render it out, it actually renders as like a minute or just over a minute maybe. So when you go to upload it to YouTube, you've got your vertical video. It's rendered out vertical properly like we just talked about. But when you put it on YouTube, it still doesn't put it up as a short. It may be because it's just too close to that one minute mark and it doesn't allow you to put it up as a short. I've run into that problem, so that might be something that you might come across as well. well there you have it, six fixes, four common problems here in DaVinci Resolve. If you found one of these helpful that you didn't know, drop me a comment, let me know. Or if you have another fix for a common problem that you usually have, let us know, help out the community leave that in a comment as well a big thank you to skillshare for sponsoring today's video check them out if you're interested in learning online and with that said guys thank you so much for tuning in i will see you in the next video peace